So when we look at the fossil record before the agricultural revolution, we actually see very wide jaws with straight teeth, all of their wisdom teeth are in and comfortably so. Their jaws are big and straight and wide and, and, and pronounced. Uh, they're not these short, truncated, crowded jaws with crowded teeth. Now we look at uh, height in the fossil record. Actually, people in, in uh, prehistoric era were actually taller and they had larger brain sizes. So the average uh, brain size of Homo sapiens was 11% larger before the agricultural revolution than it is now. Neanderthal brains were actually larger than that, going back like 50,000 years. There are areas where uh, you know, people were known to have been hunting mammoths, and we can date these and say like, okay, well, these, these guys were mammoth hunters, and we can see this by other, other uh, metrics as well to show that that's what they were eating. And they found that, that some of these populations were on average six foot two or even six foot four. And that, that's on average, the, you know, the average height of uh, uh, um, an adult male in America is five foot eight, you know, and in China, Mongolia and elsewhere, it's like five foot six, somewhere it's five foot four. That's, that's very, very short. And that's the average. So, you know, half the population would be below that as well. Not so in the areas that, uh, that had, uh, an abundance of meat to eat like these uh, big mastodon hunters and on average about six foot two or more. Um, you know, the, the different tribes in Africa where they just eat meat on average, these guys are six foot two, six foot three, six foot four. The average height of a population denotes the average health of a population. And while you may have, uh, you know, geographical, uh, uh, you know, you know, differences in population uh, and sort of, uh, you know, like you have the pygmies in Africa, you know, they're at full height. Those guys are not that tall. However, uh, you know, you do have uh, different populations like in Asia. We have, you know, people that went through, you know, the the, the you know, the forced famines through, of uh, Mao Zedong and the other, other communist famines. Um, obviously, they were, had stunted growth and you have all these, these uh, elderly Chinese people that are very short. And then they come over to America and they have kids who are six foot four, you know, because this is a nutritional issue. This is not just a genetic issue. And we look at brain size as well. Okay, so this is, this is a chart of our brains growing, going back 10 million, 10 million years, and it's slowly creeping up, slowly creeping up, slowly creeping up. And then you see it around two, two and a half million years, all of a sudden this spike up. And that's because during that slow rise, we're eating more meat and more fat. And we were growing our brain because we're figuring out, you know, how to get better quality food. We're starting to figure out tools. And all of a sudden, when we're basically forced to go full carnivore, because we don't have any other options with the ice ages, our brain development skyrockets and it has this exponential growth right up until the end there. Where you can see right there at the end, it all of a sudden has a sharp decline downwards. Okay. You cannot argue that that is a genetic change. Like that, that is, that is something that happened in the environment. Like the genes don't happen that fast. So it's nearly a straight line. When you look at it, you know, in, in proportion at that small area and then almost direct line downwards. Okay. So that, that is a sharp, sharp, sharp decline. And so something happened there, something happened that it was not good for us. And if you actually look at that, that coincides with the advent of agriculture and plant-based nutrition becoming more prevalent, not even as, as, as dominant as it is now, just more prevalent. 